for this project, I'm taking these bud vases that I got from the Dollar Tree. I think these were out last spring, but I love the shape of them and painted both vases in a coat of gesso. Next, I'm taking my detail tip hot glue gun and going to start adding lines of hot glue all over the vase. I saw someone do this on social media. I can't remember if it was on Instagram or TikTok or where, but I thought it was genius for creating kind of an organic texture. I had no rhyme or reason to how I was applying the hot glue. I just made zigzags and didn't want it to look too symmetrical or like perfect lines. The detail tip glue gun is perfect for this project since you have a lot more control over how much is coming out and how thin the lines are. I did one of the vases with horizontal lines and the other with vertical lines for a bit of contrast. After I covered both vases in hot glue, I painted them with this nutmeg spray paint. Unfortunately, the spray paint did not stick to the surface very well. It looks like a mess, but it looks like it didn't stick to the gesso, which is interesting because gesso is meant to be a primer for paint to adhere to. Very strange. So I decided to take my Dixie Belle paint in the color Mud Puddle and used a chippy brush to get in all of the grooves between the glue. Once that paint was dry, I took the Dixie Belle white wax with a stencil brush to stipple it over top of the paint. Let me tell you, I love this white wax so much better than Waverly. Waverly is so sticky and it's not white. If you're looking for a good white wax, give this one a try. I did small sections and then wiped back the wax, leaving it in the grooves. I love the way these turned out. So unique and perfect for... I want to say is a Pinterest dupe, but it's actually an Etsy dupe. I just found it on Pinterest and here's the inspo. It cost $34. I had all of these supplies on hand, so it didn't cost me anything to make. I started out creating the arch shape by using foam core board and an embroidery hoop for the top and then my roller for the sides. The Etsy one is made entirely out of clay, but I didn't want to use that much clay for the background. When cutting foam core board, you want to make sure you have a sharp blade so it cuts cleanly. I also used my embroidery hoop as a guide. But if you don't get the edges smooth when cutting, you can also sand them down. Next, I drew the lines for where each color is going. I did recreate this exactly like the Pinterest Etsy one, but used different paint colors. The colors I used are Sandcastle and Mud Puddle by Dixie Belle and Truffle and White by Waverly. You don't need to make sure the lines where the two colors meet is perfect because that's going to be covered up. The second arch is painted a solid white. I also ended up swapping the top two browns, but looking back at the footage, I wish I would have left it. One other tip when painting foam core board, it wants to curl on you because of the moisture from the paint. So to correct this, you wanna make sure you paint the back as well. While that dries, I need to create the clay parts. I'm using these colors by Craftsmart, which is the Michaels brand, and I'm creating the rainbow first. You can use an extruder, which is what I used, or you can roll out the clay by hand. I made two strands of each color for the rainbow. After the rainbow was done, I needed to make the little dangly bits that were at the bottom. I didn't have a cutter with the correct shape, but I do have a rainbow shaped cutter. So I just pushed that into the clay after rolling it out, but only pressed all the way down in the middle and then flipped the cutter over so I could use the rounded part on both sides. And I created six of these pieces and then added a hole using my needle tool. For the second arch, I made one more long white snake and the dangly bits using a different clay color, and then popped all my clay pieces into the oven and baked them at 275 degrees Fahrenheit for 20 minutes, and then turned the oven off and let the clay cool down inside. When the clay was cool enough to work with, I used my Starbond super glue to attach the rainbow to the white arch. 
Then to add a hole to the bottom of the arch for the dangly pieces, I used a crocodile, but a regular hole punch would work just as well. And I just laid out the pieces and eyeballed the spacing between them. To add the pieces on, I'm using jump rings. I have a variety pack of different colors and used the color that matched the clay the closest. I believe my jump rings are only about seven millimeters, so I had to add three of them to each piece. One on the arch, one on the clay, and then one in the middle. That way the clay piece would face the right direction. For the second arch, I glued the clay snakes down where the paint colors meet and added the dangly pieces the same way. I forgot to create the moon with my first round of clay, so I had to go back in and add that. And the last thing I did was add a black chain to hang these on the wall. This is a plant hanger from the Dollar Tree. I wish I had a different color chain, but we're working with what we got here. grass cloth technique recently that was applied to furniture but I thought it looked so cool and I wanted to give it a try on some home decor. What better object than a planter? I mean would it be one of my videos if I wasn't sharing at least one planter makeover? I just want to make sure you guys never run out of ideas. Anyways, I picked up this large planter at Walmart and the supplies you need to achieve this look are a glazing medium, paint color of your choice, and a nylon brush. You start out mixing one part of paint to three parts of the glazing medium. And the glazing medium is important to give an authentic grass cloth look, which has a light sheen to it. And it also prolongs the dry time of the paint, giving you a little more time to work. You also wanna start with a white base to give a more authentic look, but you could also use a lighter color than your paint for a customized grass, grass cloth look, if that's what you prefer. I used a roller to apply the paint glaze mix and worked in small sections. Real grass cloth only comes in 36 inch wide panels. You could tape off areas that are 36 inches wide if you want that look. I decided not to do that, but still worked in smaller sections. Next, taking a nylon brush, you wanna start dragging it across the surface of the wet paint to create the lines. Don't worry about them being perfectly straight. Real grass cloth has distortions to the lines and then drag the brush vertically up and down the sections. You can stop here, but I wanted the horizontal lines to be more prominent, so I went over it one more time going across. And you wanna work pretty quickly here before the paint starts drying. the bottom of the planter to be one solid color so after the grass cloth looked dried I painted the bottom and that's it for this one. I love the grass cloth look and would love to try this with other home decor items and in some different colors. For more everyday decor, check out this video right here, and I'll see you in the next one.